Hi. Welcome to Prime Recap. Six young people are selected to visit a summer camp that has just been set up in the middle of an island that is home to hundreds of dinosaurs. However, when one of these beasts escapes from its cage, they will need to band together to survive the attacks and return home. Today we will recap the first season of the series Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous, from 2020. During an escape, Darius and his friend try to reach the rescue helicopter without being devoured by dinosaurs. However, just as the pair were about to reach the extraction point, Dr. Merriweather is attacked by a group of dinosaurs and eaten alive. Then a T-Rex approaches and Darius is also eliminated. The young man is sad that he has lost yet again, and Brandon, his older brother, advises him to get out of the computer for a while. However, Darius is determined to beat that game, so he can win a trip to the Jurassic World. The problem is that all gamers say that game is impossible to beat, but Darius believes that his knowledge of dinosaurs can help him achieve victory. The next morning, after a long night's rest, the boy wakes up inspired, because he believes he has found a way to get through the final stage of the game. Darius then turns on the computer and picks up where he left off. He spots some bones scattered on the floor and uses a skull-shaped whistle to call the Velociraptors and get them to attack the T-Rex that is trying to devour him. In this way, the player manages to reach the helicopter and finally ends the last phase. At that moment, Darius receives a message saying that he was the first person to beat that game and, as a reward, he will receive a ticket to visit the Jurassic World Adventure Camp. A few days later, he joins five other teenagers on a trip to Nublar Island. That group brings together the first young people from around the world to learn about Jurassic Camp. When they arrive at the site, they are met by Dave and Roxy, who will be responsible for introducing the children to the park's attractions. Kenji is the last member to arrive on the island in his private helicopter and everyone climbs into the truck to be taken to the camp. During the commute, Brooklyn pulls out her cell phone to record a vlog for her 27 million followers. The girl is famous and has received an invitation to visit the Jurassic Camp in order to promote the place, which will very soon be open to the public. On the way, the group is surprised by the appearance of one of the dinosaurs and both supervisors get out of the vehicle to investigate. When he least expects it, Darius is attacked, but luckily the animal is tiny and presents no danger. Quickly, Roxy manages to capture him and puts the Comsignato into a transport box to be taken back to his cage. By the time they finally arrive at the camp, the teenagers are amazed, for the place is incredible and gigantic. When it is up and running, the place will be able to house 500 children and 150 staff members. After unpacking, the youngsters have the opportunity to observe a herd of herbivorous dinosaurs up close and Darius is thrilled to see all those magnificent species right in front of him. Next, Dave helps visitors cross a zipline and they can see a Brachiosaurus up close. During the night, Darius cannot get to sleep and decides to go out and investigate the place. Kenji notices his roommate's escape and goes after him. While they are talking, Brooklyn approaches and the trio decides to leave the camp and go to Comsignato's cage to see him up close. Upon arriving there, Kenji tries to get the influencer's cell phone to take some pictures, since she was the only one who was allowed to use a phone on the island. However, in doing so, he ends up dropping the device inside the cage and decides to go down there to get it back. Before climbing the enclosure, the boy decides to take a picture of the dinosaurs and soon discovers that that cage is actually the shelter of a group of Velociraptor. At that moment, Kenji needs to escape in order not to be devoured, but the exit gate is locked. Darius decides to go down there to help him distract the dinosaurs, but he becomes another target of those animals. Just as they were about to be devoured, the reflectors on the cages are triggered and Roxy distracts the creatures while Dave gets the youngsters out of the enclosure. The next morning, as punishment for having put everyone's lives at risk, the duo is given the task of cleaning up a mountain of dinosaur dung while the rest of the group goes on a visit to Dr. Wu's laboratory. Darius is furious with Kenji, because through his fault he is missing the opportunity to see the birth of a dinosaur. Then, in an attempt to compensate the boy, Kenji decides to take him to a tunnel that connects the entire island through an underground network. Since his father is a major investor in the park, the boy has been to that island dozens of times and intends to use the underground passage to reach the cell of one of the most aggressive dinosaurs in the entire park. Meanwhile, in the genetics lab, the youngsters witness the birth of an ankylosaur. The creature has an asymmetry in its horns and Ben is soon enchanted by it. While everyone is distracted by the ankylosaur baby, Brooklyn decides to go investigate Dr. Wu's office. Interestingly, she meets Sammy on the way, but the girl says she was just looking for the bathroom. When the girl leaves, Brooklyn continues her investigation and manages to break into the office. She photographs everything around her, but when she decides to open a secret folder on the computer, an alarm goes off and the girl is caught in the act. After a few minutes walking through the jungle, the two boys finally find the cage they were looking for and soon discover that they are on the wrong side of the fence. 
Instead of being outside the cage, Darius realizes that they are trapped inside along with a gigantic Carnotaurus. After finding Brooklyn in his office, Dr. Wu becomes enraged and throws all visitors out of his laboratory. Ben then asks what will happen to Bumpy, as he is already very attached to the hatchling, and learns that she will soon be released into a herd of ankylosaurs. Just then, on the other side of the park, the two friends need to escape from an angry predator, and Kenji crosses a small passage to escape. When Darius tries to do the same, the cage door locks, but Kenji manages to help him open the door and escape. Then they both run back to the place where they were and manage to get there before the supervisors. In this way, the duo is freed from receiving yet another punishment. That night, Sammy tries to get closer to Yasmina, because she realizes that the girl is the most distant of the group. The young girl is reserved and is not in the habit of making many friends. Sammy, however, cannot accept the fact that she does not wish to socialize and tries to force a friendship on her. Yasmina, however, always manages to stay away. The next day, the youngsters split into pairs to pilot the gyrospheres while watching a herd of dinosaurs being moved from one side of the park to the other. However, during the outing, a storm approaches and some dinosaurs start to get agitated. At this point, the supervisors realize that the best thing to do is to stop the activity. Dave then informs the teenagers that they need to return to camp, but something unexpected happens and the pair need to go and warn the guards about the interference that is happening on the radio. Before leaving, Dave asks the youngsters to wait until he and Roxy return, but upon seeing a Sinoceratops wandering away from the herd, Darius manages to convince Brooklyn to go after him, and the entire rest of the group decides to accompany them. However, their plan begins to go wrong when the animal attacks the Euro and frightens all the rest of the herd. Thus, the group must flee to avoid being trampled by the animals, who separate and run desperately everywhere. During the escape, Ben and Kenji have an accident and their Euro stops working. Darius and Brooklyn try to get close to Sinoceratops and end up being attacked. Just then, their Euro is thrown away and they end up in a pool of quicksand. The pair use a radio to call for help, so Sammy and Yasmina rush to their aid. On the way, the girls meet Ben and Kenji and decide to give them a ride. The four friends then drive through the forest until they find the other two members of the group. When they find them, Sammy has the idea of tying a rope to Sinoceratops' body and using it to pull the Euro out of the mud. Then Dave and Roxy show up and take the teenagers back to camp. That night, Yasmina decides to give Sammy a chance and approaches her with the goal of starting a friendship, when she goes to check the videos she has recorded. Brooklyn notices something wrong and notices that Sammy has collected DNA from one of the dinosaurs. What the girl doesn't realize is that her fellow camper is right behind her and is able to watch the video. Darius has had a passion for dinosaurs since he was a child, and this interest came about because of his father, who also always dreamed of seeing Jurassic Park. To symbolize this dream they both shared, the man gave his youngest son a pair of Velociraptor's fangs and they began to wear them as pendants for their necklaces. Darius misses his late father terribly, but is happy to have the opportunity to realize the dream they both envisioned together. A few days after receiving the first visitors to Jurassic Camp, Roxy decides to go to Claire Deering for reinforcements and Dave leaves a note before leaving. When she wakes up, Brooklyn is furious because her cell phone is missing and accuses Sammy of having taken the device to get rid of some evidence. Upon hearing this, Yasmina promptly stands up for her friend and states that she would never steal anything. In an attempt to prevent a fight from happening, Darius interrupts the discussion and calls his friends to go to the observation tower to see the dinosaurs. When they get there, they hear something approaching, but are reassured when they realize that it is only a Brachiosaurus. Then, two guards appear and ask the young men to return to the shelter, but they are surprised by the arrival of Indominus Rex, who brutally devours those men. When they see what has happened, the teenagers panic and everything gets worse the moment the monster starts attacking the tower. Sammy almost falls, but is supported by her classmates. The group then decides to use the zip line to cross safely, but before they reach the camp, the tower is knocked down and the teenagers fall into the forest. Luckily, they all remain unharmed and need to find shelter. When Sammy realizes that their lives are in danger, she decides to give Brooklyn her cell phone, so that the girl can use it to call for help. However, when she takes the cell phone out of her pocket, Sammy realizes that it has been destroyed by the fall. When they hear the roar of the predator, the team rushes to the camp, but soon discover that the place has also been destroyed. Now that they are alone and unprotected, the youngsters must band together to survive in that park surrounded by dinosaurs. As they approach the enclosure of the Carnotaurus, they discover that the monster is also on the loose and decide to make their way to the visitor center, hoping to find someone who can help them get off that island. Meanwhile, Roxy and Dave are in the waiting room waiting to speak with Claire. The woman is restless as she has not heard from the children all morning. 
So she opens the cabinets in the room looking for a radio communicator and discovers that the park employees are suffering an attack by Indominus Rex. During their trek through the jungle, the group spots a downed Ankylosaurus and realizes that the monster they are fleeing from has passed that way. Suddenly, they hear a noise coming from the woods and run for cover, but are surprised by Bumpy's arrival. Immediately, Ben recognizes her by the asymmetry of her horns, and Darius remembers that the genetics lab is nearby. As a result, the group changes their route and Ben decides to take Bumpy along with them. Despite knowing that the animal might slow him down, the boy refuses to leave him behind and drags the little dinosaur all the way. Then, in order to facilitate the transportation of the Ankylosaur, Ben suggests that they use a van that is abandoned in the middle of the forest to get around. Inside, Brooklyn finds a tablet and discovers that it is possible to track the dinosaurs through it, because all the animals on the island are equipped with a locator chip. Suddenly, they hear the noise of a large predator approaching and discover that Indominus Rex does not have a tracking chip, as his location is not showing up on the map. Immediately, the group gets into the van and, despite not having a driver's license yet, Kenji takes the wheel. The young man speeds up the vehicle in an attempt to avoid the monster and ends up driving into another restricted area of the park. Accidentally, during their escape, they end up finding the genetics lab and rush there in search of Dr. Wu and his staff. However, when they arrive at the place, the only person they find is Eddie, who was ready to welcome his colleagues and celebrate his birthday with them. Darius then asks what the plan is to get out of that place safely, and the scientist begins to laugh alarmingly. He then states that no one will show up to save them. When he discovers that the youngsters have used a vehicle to get to the lab, Eddie runs outside and manages to steal the van. He is about to leave when Indominus Rex appears and attacks the vehicle. Eddie then tries to hide under the van, but the animal manages to move the vehicle and devours the man. At that instant, the children run to hide, but Bumpy ends up catching the predator's attention with his roar and the whole group is almost devoured. Darius adjusts his plans and asks everyone to run to the van. After taking a tumble, Brooklyn ends up attracting the dinosaur, but Sammy helps the girl escape. Seeing his friends in danger, Darius decides to help them and uses a piece of wood to make noise and lure Indominus away. When everyone is already inside the vehicle, the boy finds a loophole to escape and runs towards his friends. Everyone is already safe when Darius realizes that Roxy is trying to communicate with them and manages to explain the situation to her. After passing several rocks on the way, everyone celebrates that they are still alive, and Sammy accidentally drops Brooklyn's cell phone on the ground. At that moment, the girl becomes furious and Yasmina ends up crashing the vehicle into a rock. The girl feels deceived by her friend, and from one moment to the next, everyone turns against Sammy. The girl tries to explain herself and ends up confessing that she went to Jurassic Camp in order to spy on Nublar Island, at the request of a company called Manta Corp. Sammy's family ranch was going through a serious crisis and her parents needed to borrow money from the company. Then, in order to pay off the debt, they demanded that Sammy investigate Jurassic World, otherwise her family would lose absolutely everything. Even after hearing the young woman's story, Yasmina refuses to trust her again. While the group is thinking about the best way to deal with that crisis, Indominus Rex shows up and is fleeing the bombing from a helicopter. Everything seemed fine, until the dinosaur destroys the greenhouse where the pterodactyls are kept and these animals bring down the aircraft. Then these creatures go after new prey and the youngsters decide to flee to the river of kayaks, which is very close to that location. After getting rid of the attack, the youngsters split into pairs and use the kayaks to get the hell out of there. Meanwhile, Dave and Roxy contact the island's security center for help in rescuing the six lost teenagers. However, in the face of the Great Crisis, there are not enough guards to do this job. So the two supervisors decide to steal a car and do everything on their own. While traversing the cave, the group marvels at the beauty of the place, which is teeming with bioluminescent creatures. Upon seeing the small Ankylosaur inside the dinghy, the Peristozoans approach and attack the kayaks. However, they move away when they see that the boats are being dragged into the waterfall. After crossing the waterfall, the six friends end up in a pond and Kenji soon realizes that this is the pond where the Mosasaur lives. It doesn't take long before the giant aquatic animal notices the presence of the intruders and starts circling them. To get out of there alive, the teenagers must row to the bleachers, but are chased by the creature. Brooklyn and Kenji are the first to leave the lake, and Yasmina decides to stay behind with the goal of distracting the Mosasaur while her friends escape to safety. When all her classmates are safe, the young woman grabs onto a cable and is pulled straight into the bleachers. During the journey, the monster comes out of the water and tries to devour her, but Yasmina manages to escape its attack and ends up twisting her ankle while jumping onto dry land. After resting for a few minutes, the group receives the news that they need to go to the docks, because the last boat that will take people off the island will leave in two hours. 
To reach their destination faster, they decide to hitch a ride with the monorail, but end up encountering the Carnotaur on the way. So Darius is in charge of distracting the creature while his colleagues run to the stairs and crawl low to reach the train. However, when the monorail makes it stop, an electronic voice is triggered, drawing the predator's attention. At that instant, the youngsters quickly run to the train, but Yasmina ends up being left behind due to her injury. Then, Darius returns to save her and everyone makes it to the train safely as the Carnotaur slides down the stairs. After the vehicle leaves, the supervisors arrive at the stadium and begin to investigate the place looking for the children. Initially, they begin to believe that the youngsters have been devoured, but Roxy realizes that they are alive when she finds Kenji's sunglasses. Her suspicions are confirmed when she and Dave spot the children inside the train. Immediately, the pair also makes their way to the docks, hoping to find them there. However, during the journey, the young friends end up suffering an attack and Darius begins to destroy the train's lights, because he realizes that the luminosity is attracting a flock of pterodactyls. The group then begins to turn off the lights in the cars and realizes that just ahead is a train that has been destroyed due to the attack. If they do not alter the route of the tracks, they will hit the vehicle at high speed and are unlikely to survive. Darius realizes that he needs to get to the control wagon, but the door doesn't open and the only way to get there is through the sunroof. However, just as he is about to leave, Ben decides to face his fears and begins the mission to rescue his friends. When the two vehicles are about to collide, the boy pulls the lever and changes the course of the rail, which saves everyone in that vehicle. However, when the young man goes to celebrate his victory with his friends, a pterodactyl appears and grabs the boy by the waist. Darius tries to pull him back, but Ben ends up slipping from his hands and falls in the middle of the forest. To make matters worse, Darius realizes that the monorail is moving away from the docks. In order to avoid losing the chance to be rescued, he has the idea to jump into the woods and follow the rest of the way on foot, but Bumpy gets separated from the team. Meanwhile, Roxy and Dave arrive at the extraction point, but notice that the youngsters have not yet arrived, so the supervisors decide to go after them, but are stopped by one of the guards, who forces them onto the boat. On the other side of the island, Kenji guides his friends through underground passages so that they are not so exposed on the surface. It is not long before a dinosaur approaches and he uses an electric stick used to tame dinosaurs to defend himself. However, he soon discovers that this is only a Comsignado, who, in fact, is together with his gang. While the group is discussing what to do next, the Carnotaurus appears by surprise and chases the teenagers through the corridors. The team then enters the pipe to throw the animal off, but ends up making noise when removing the metal door that blocks the passage and the predator goes after them. However, they soon manage to escape the creature and are happy to see a sign announcing that the exit to the docks is only 300 meters away. When they get there, the youngsters realize that there is only a concrete wall in front of them and all the exits have been blocked. Slowly, the roar approaches and everyone presses Darius to find a way out. The young man feels nervous as he tries to think of a solution, but the group unites to help him and they all start rummaging through the wooden boxes. However, all they find are cylinders of super compressed air, which they intend to use to distract the dinosaur. When the animal appears, the youngsters light a bomb and throw it at him, but the Carnotaur pushes the cylinders back, causing the youngsters to be surrounded in the midst of the fire. To prevent the monster from hurting his friends, Darius makes an effort to get its attention and, after hiding, throws the electric stick at the gas cylinder, causing a huge explosion. After everything around them is destroyed, the youngsters celebrate their victory, but the predator rises amidst the rubble and everyone is on alert. However, the creature acknowledges its defeat and decides to leave. At that moment, the group notices the hole that has been made in the wall and is relieved that they will now be able to reach the docks. The bad news is that time has run out and everyone is gone. The teens are convinced that a search party will soon arrive to rescue them, but until then, they will need to work together to survive. A few miles away, Bumpy is walking through the forest when he meets Ben, who is apparently still alive. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.